Hey, my name is John Kerwin, and I am the founder of Wake Up or Else. We are a 508C1 PMA. It's kind of like a 508C3, but we operate in the private. And we have an online Christian fellowship for the truther community. We have about 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. And we're reaching out to pastors, church leaders, and influencers and asking you, inviting you to please consider coming out to one of uh, the live streams that I conduct and speak with us on a topic that we know is one of the most important events in the church age that most pastors and church leaders are either totally unaware of or are misunderstanding and ignoring. So for over the last six years, our Christian community has been unable to get even a handful of pastors or church leaders to engage us in any type of discussion. And a Christian truther, by the way, is a believer uh, walking with Jesus that has also become a participant in what is being called the Great Awakening. So this means in part that they have come to realize that many of the things that we have presented with from what I call officialdom that are widely accepted as legitimate have turned out to be a brazen hoax on humanity. I mean, the size and scope of these deceptions is so audacious that it's understandable why people don't even question them when they're shown the evidence. But <clears throat> these are things that to most people would seem logistically impossible and just ridiculous. However, the evidence exposing these frauds turns out to be very compelling. And it's been right in front of us the whole time and it's right in front of you. But uh, there are very powerful biases that act as filters, unfortunately, to block these things from our perception and our, our willingness to accept them. That is until we give ourselves permission to question officialdom. And so discovering these things, however, is a life changing revelation for most. And it causes terrible upheaval uh, with loved ones who don't share these same views. And many of us as believers have been forced to choose between embracing what we now know is true and our happiness in our homes and our churches. We've lost friends, children, spouses, church families because we refuse to clap for NASA like a trained seal any longer. We have been mercilessly castigated for advocating ideas such as the existence of a shadow government or a deep state that is covertly running the world. Yet, now you have President Trump He's not promising a chicken in every pot. He's saying openly, if you vote for me, I will eliminate the deep state. That's his platform. So what does he know that he that you don't know, Pastor, if you think the deep state is a conspiracy theory for kooks? And so, in fact, I now identify as a conspiracy theory theorist, and my pronouns are I told you so. So unfortunately, and with all respect, uh, church leaders in general have received a failing grade in this area <clears throat> of responding to your con congregants that try to approach you because we know we, we have been treated this way. And instead of finding our church leaders to be welcoming and having an open mind and exploring these difficult topics with us, we find ourselves being told we need to take medication or just we have a demon or, you know, we're actually met with cynicism excuse me, and, uh, you know, ushered out of the office only after a few minutes. And we're told that we're deceived. We should just focus on Jesus and read our Bibles. I mean, it's very similar to that scripture in, in Acts. Uh, I think it's Acts 12, like verse 12, where Rhoda comes to the door. Um, she was right. And then they told her she was crazy because she was saying Peter's, uh, Peter's at the door. And so this response is very unbiblical, it's shameful, and it's the reason for my ministry moving forward. And so I'm calling on church leaders, inviting you to come out in the open, have a gracious, loving, intelligent discourse on these difficult topics so that we can try to mend some of this damage that's being done with, within the body of Christ regarding these topics that are typically referred to as conspiracy theories. <clears throat> Uh, you have a lot of people leaving your church because of how these topics are handled, and typically pastors don't even know it. Um, I know this is true uh, because these people are joining my ministry. 
in uh, Matthew 5, Jesus warns believers against shaming people, calling them a fool. And this transgression was so egregious to Jesus that he suggested that calling someone a fool could land you in hell. Matthew 5. However, that same sentiment is what is intended when someone invokes the term conspiracy theory. Well, well, John, I don't really go in for those conspiracy theories. You just called me a fool. And you didn't probably even know it. Um, it's a character assassination term and needs to be removed from our interaction going forward. And so at the very top of this list of topics that seems to elicit a triggered vitriolic response from pastors is the Mandela effect. But I understand. I mean, we're advocating that the Bible is being supernaturally changed to fulfill end times prophecy. It's not a popular topic. And so I'm not going to go into any detail in this short invitation video, but you should have received another link in the email that was sent to you that will give you a fairly comprehensive overview of why we have taken this position that we have regarding the scriptures. And let me be clear, believers that are emphatically testifying that their Bibles are supernaturally changing to fulfill end times prophecy do fit the dictionary definition of a heretic. There, that's not in dispute. I mean, a heretic is a, a person holding an opinion that's at odds with what is generally accepted. That's what a heretic is. Well, I mean, I think we both agree that if I suggest that I believe that the devil has his filthy fingers in my Bible, somehow is able to, by permission of God, to magically fiddle with the physical words on the pages of my grandmother's Gutenberg Bible in the attic, <laughs> I think that you would agree that I'm in the minority. So, you know, but being a heretic doesn't necessarily make me an enemy of the cross. It might make me an enemy of organized religion. Uh, many of God's favorite sons and daughters were branded as heretics. Were they not? They were persecuted during the 600 years of the Inquisition. Many precious ones were tortured and burned as heretics because they refused to recant their faith in Christ alone. And we're refusing to recant our conscience and our, our cognitive powers where God commanded us to remember eight different times. So do you think if God commands you to remember that you would have the capacity to have certainty about your memories? I, I would say yes. And these heretics are souls that you have undoubtedly invoked in your sermons in the most reverential pear-shaped tones that any orator has ever offered. However, you now have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of believers, claiming <clears throat> that the Mandela effect is legitimate and their Bibles are absolutely changing and they are being openly lambasted as charlatans by the church for doing so. Uh, we are figuratively being burned at the stake, and those that are doing it are as guilty as the Catholic leadership was during the Inquisition, with all due respect. And the evidence that this is taking place is so overwhelming as we looked into it. You know, we were forced to re-examine. I, I always believed the scriptures couldn't change. But we were good Bereans, and we stepped into our word, and we, you know, see if the Bible actually did teach this. You know, what we had been told from behind the sacred desk all of our Christian lives, from the front of the room, I hold in my hand the eternal, unchanging word of God. Well, I now have to beg to differ. What you hold in your hand is the scriptures, which contain the immutable, unchanging words of God. When Paul said, bring my cloak, which was in Troas, that is not at the same revelation and authority as God telling Moses to the Ten Commandments. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. It, it is a complicated subject, of course. And it will make for very interesting discussion when you call in. Please consider my invitation. Because what we found when we looked into this is that the biblical evidence to support the idea that the scriptures cannot change through some medium or, or agency such as the devil uh, wasn't there. 
it wasn't clear and it wasn't there. Uh, Thy word is forever settled in heaven, O Lord, doesn't mean the Bible can't change. It means something different. We found that the passages used that put forward this idea were either taken out of context or forced into that conclusion. Okay, I am a I am a fundamentalist Bible believer, orthodox. I, when it says God made Adam out of the dirt, I believe God made Adam out of the dirt. When it says the Red Sea parted or the axe head floated, I believe it. I'm not metaphorically believing my Bible. I'm a Bible believer. And I would not want to be the guy out here advocating something as, as egregious as the Bible supernaturally changing if I didn't have a mountain of unequivocal evidence. So... We are here, and God did give the Antichrist permission in Revelation 13. He gave him power and authority, that's permission, to wage war on the saints and to prevail against them. And in Daniel 7, 25, we read that the Antichrist will seek to change times and laws, and the word law is, inter is translated the law of God in Amos 7, or Ezra 7, I'm sorry. It's astonishing what we found. And there's others. And so we were forced to make this distinction against our orthodoxy between the meaning of the term word of God and the term scriptures, right? As I think about it, in the beginning was the scripture and the scripture was with God and the scripture was God. That doesn't resonate, okay? So scripture and the word are not the same words. We, we, we have been sloppy with our doctrine. And we have not rightly divided the word, and this is not parsing doctrinal hairs. This is the hour that we live in. So this summary that I've included in the email will illustrate how this event can be taking place without impugning God's character in any way. It is impossible for God to lie, but this event can most certainly be happening without diminishing any of God's divine perfections. It's in the in the same way that the inaccessibility of the word of God to the pagan living in the jungles of Borneo does not bring the theologian to hold God in derision. Do you feel that God is unjust because there's a lack of access to his word for some in this world? No. It's a fallen world. There's free will. You know, there's all kinds of doctrinal reasons why we don't think God is unjust. <clears throat> well, this judgment <clears throat> falls into that similar category where the word of God has <clears throat> begun to become inaccessible. So therefore, God is not lying. That's only one observation that I've been able to receive from the Lord on this topic. So the video, as I said, will go through those. And, uh, you know, if I'm deceived, I want you to show me how this is happening. And all of us in our community want you to help us out of this darkness that you believe we're in. And I'm willing to admit that I'm wrong and to be shown how this deception is taking place. But what I have found is that most of the arguments of church leaders and fellow Christians that this event is not taking place are very unconvincing because they rarely address the evidence that we're presenting. No one has an answer for our valid questions like how do you explain a flip-flop most people don't even know what that is or residual evidence there's no explanation for it we didn't believe the bible can change until it started changing then we had to go back in <clears throat> and look a little more closely and this video is an invitation for you to call into the next live stream that i conduct on a regular basis that is specifically for church leaders that would be willing to have an open discussion in the city gates regarding this topic. Is the Bible being supernaturally changed to fulfill end times prophecy? I mean, aren't you a little curious about the evidence that we have that has us all worked up, that has our spouses divorcing us like mine has after 24 years of marriage? As a former pastor and worship leader for over 30 years, my heart is with you. I do not believe that you are my adversary, okay? Nor do I have any intention of trying to make your visit with us uncomfortable or embarrass you or 
crush you publicly in a debate. My Bible says that the goal of the commandment is love from a pure heart. And I'm simply looking for someone that is ready to give an answer to every man who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. So take a look at the supporting uh, overview of how this phenomenon could actually be affecting the scriptures. Please consider calling in and sharing your heart. It's okay if you disagree. We're like you. We just want to find the truth on this topic. And what you do to join the show is just click on the link in the live chat. Once you're um, in the live stream, it will ask you to enter your name, and then you'll come backstage until I let you in. You'll need to log into YouTube, a YouTube channel first using your phone or a computer with a microphone. Then go to Wake Up or Else in YouTube. And you'll see the live stream at the top of the page just with the date. Just click on that once we go live, and then you'll be in. You'll be in the live stream, and then you'll see the people chatting over on the right. That's where you'll see the link to call in. When you're ready, just click on that link in the chat and call in, and then thousands of people will hear what you have to say, most of whom are believers. And if we are deceived, this is a chance for you to sow your insight and your experience your revelation of God on, and the truth of his word into thousands of people's minds and hearts. So please, please, please make the time. Come out and speak with us. And thank you for your time today. We really appreciate you and love you and look forward to hearing from you. My name is John Kerwin. My email is pleasewakeuporelse at gmail.com. And I look forward to uh, having you with us. Have a, have a great day. God bless.